the postseason marches on at Princeton University. It's the first round of the NIT at Jadwin Gymnasium. UNLV makes the trip from out west to take on the Princeton Tigers. Derek Jones and Noah Savage with you tonight from Jadwin. The winner of this game will get Boston College, who pulled the upset against Providence last night. That game will take place either Saturday or Sunday. North Texas will face the winner of Seton Hall, St. Joe's, which is taking place right now. On the side of UNLV, Noah, they have an outstanding freshman in D. Don Thomas, who has been sensational. Yeah, he, he was a number 22 ranked player in his class coming out of high school. He's lived up to and su surpassed that. Five assists a game is 42nd in the country, so he's going to set it up for everybody on UNLV. Princeton has a pair of sensational sophomores in their own right. How have they been able to navigate this season for the Tigers? Well, Xavier Lee gives them their pizzazz, their life, their joie de vie, and then Caden Pierce was just the conference's player of the year. Even with UNLV in the building, he may be the best athlete on the floor tonight. The Princeton Tigers champions of the Ivy League during the regular season, and they utilized the same starting five each time out. It's been a consistent starting five, and one of the reasons why they had so much success this year. Yeah, they know exactly what they're going to get out of each other. They've got great cohesiveness, an elite offensive team, and they've got three players averaging over three assists a game. They pass it, and man, do they shoot it from deep. For the running Rebels, Kevin Kruger will try to guide his team to a victory tonight, and he's faced a ton of challenges this year. He's only had his team really at full strength for 14 minutes this entire season. Yeah, in a, a league that got six into the NCAA tournament, they were fourth in that league and didn't make it. This is a great basketball team. He's done a great job. And his team will be shorthanded again tonight. We will tell you about that throughout the broadcast, as it will be Rob Whaley and Caden Pierce. The opening tap control by the Tigers, and we are off and running here. First round action, the NIT. Blake Peters will pop a three and starts it up for Princeton. That's what they do, they hit over 10 a game. They're gonna launch, and it's good to see if you're a Princeton fan to see Blake Peters knock down his first one. And a counter on the other side by Justin Webster. This is a different starting lineup yet again for UNLV. They are without the services of Luis Rodriguez, who is back home in California tending to a family matter. The Tigers, same starting five with Lee Pierce, Alaco, Peters, and Martini. You can see already UNLV's got their high hand on every catch. So the message was, Everybody shoots it for Princeton. Everybody shoots it deep. Be ready and take away that three-point shot. Princeton lost 90 to 81 to Brown on Saturday in the Ivy League semifinal. UNLV in after a loss to San Diego State in the Mountain West tournament. And yeah, overtime, Heart heartbreaking loss. San Diego State. A lot of people picking them to go very deep in the NCAA well, first, tournament, first, first, and then. Princeton uh, just, just couldn't get it going and ran into a Brown team that got incredibly hot. So, you know, as a player, you love the chance to come back out and play soon after those really crushing losses. Martini tries a three. That's good. So the Tigers shooting it well to start out a pair of threes. He's so great on the catch and shoot. He's an excellent stretch four-man, five-man for, for Princeton. Boone. Now Thomas on the attack to the rim. Thomas lays it in off the window. Yeah, Matalaco rotated and then he attacked him on the closeout and got all the way there. Princeton making its eighth appearance in NIT history. Meanwhile, this is the first postseason game for UNLV since 2013. Yeah, of course, everybody of our era, Derek, knew UNLV was synonymous with up and down, turning you over, high flying, Grandma Ma, Stacy Augman. I mean, it was one of those teams where the gear was ubiquitous. 
the three and the rebound by Rob Whaley Jr. So the offensive rebound leading to a lead for UNLV at seven to six. Pierce, the Ivy League player of the year, now Xavier Lee. Alaco out for a three. That's no good. Whaley with the rebound. Yeah, see so far four attempts, all three pointers for Princeton. There's really no limit they're going to put on themselves. They just take good ones and keep shooting. A miss by Kalen Thomas, leading to a lead rebound, and then or excuse me, Boone and Boone able to kick that ball. It'll be a side out here coming up for the Tigers. 11th appearance all time for NI for UNLV. And it's interesting to kind of see the run through here for head coach Kevin Kruger, who's been able to get this team back in postseason play. Yeah, and the Mountain West was so good this year. I mean, so many good teams, Colorado State, San Diego State, Utah State had a big year. Boone able to come up with a steal and then it was taken from him. The flip back to Peters, he'll try a three. That's no good. Boone grabs a rebound. Another three-point shot attempt, and UNLV's really not trying to run off those long misses. But that'd be a good opportunity for them to get out in the open. Boone tries a three and knocks it down. So Kalen Boone, he's a team leader in three-pointers. He had 47 of them coming in. Drills one there, and it's a 10-6 lead for UNLV. He only shoots it at 34%, but it was a great recognition by Rob Whaley to skip pass it over to him on the double team. You see Princeton doubling every time it goes down the post. Thomas loses Lee. Boone tries a jumper that trickles out, but Lee grabs the rim, and that will be a goaltend on the Tigers. Uh, Princeton shows a double, great skip pass, rise and fire from the opposite wing, and I expect the shooting percentages to be great here in the NIT because to some degree the pressure, I mean, the, the Ivy League tournament was a pressure cooker. Yes. And, and <laughs> this is like bonus basketball. It's kind of like a basketball afterlife, and you kind of just play to play. So I expect both teams to shoot the basketball well tonight. Dalen Davis into Pierce. Open look for Martini. That's an air ball. The Tigers haven't really done much inside of the three-point line. All their shots coming from deep. Isaiah Cottrell into the game for the first time. Jackie Johnson down low and a dunk applied by Carl Jones. And Carl Jones just hanging around, making himself available. Nice penetrating kick. 14-6 lead for the running Rebels. Freshman Dalen Davis into the game for Princeton. He had a monster second half against Brown. 21 points all in the second half. Martini knocks down a three, so after a couple of misses, Zach Martini hits the three to stop an 11-0 run. Jones throws it up and in. Carl Jones. So this is a situation that UNLV is in because of the injuries. No Caleb Boone tonight. More opportunities created and a turnover here created by UNLV off the errant pass. The layup attempt no good from Johnson. The Tigers back on the run out. Alaco tries a three, that clangs off the rim, no good, a rebound grab by Johnson. Now I know UNLV players are going, hey, Coach Kruger told us they shoot a lot of threes, but it's been a three-pointer every time. So now that's kind of when the, when the scouting report sinks in, is when you see what Princeton actually does. The lob by Thomas, he tried to find Jones, couldn't get it to him. Pierce down the floor, Pierce off the of Cottrell, no good, and Boone sweeps in for the rebound. If I liked it by Caden Pierce to attack on the break. 
He's going to have a speed advantage against Carl Jones. Johnson to the rim, gets swatted by Xavier Lee. Lee with that long arm. That 6-3 frame able to get the block. Quick pass, Davis steps into a three, money. That was great penetration by Xavier Lee. And an excellent hockey pass that led to the assist from Zach Mar or Martini. There, a little 1 3 1 by Princeton. This was good to them against Brown, and so was a full court press they put on. It's a defense that Mitch Henderson teams have had a lot of success with over the, over the years. Cottrell missing the three, tipped around, grabbed by Boone. Johnson steps into a three, that misses. And Davis grabbing the loose ball. Davis on the attack, he got stripped. Johnson, one-on-one, -on -one. Euro flips it up and in. And a timeout called by the Tigers. 18-12 lead, Noah. Well, Carl Jones getting it going for UNLV. Little penetrate. Up top, throw it down. UNLV up top here at the NIT. Eighteen twelve lead for UNLV over Princeton here at Jadwin Gymnasium. Opening round of the NIT. Derek Jones and Noah Savage with you tonight. And Noah, so far, a lot of three pointers in this game to start. Yeah, and that's just what Princeton's going to do. They they don't have a limit where they go. All right, thirty's too much. They get a good shot. If they miss it, they forget about it. They shoot another one. And what that leads to is you might have some droughts like this. But man, can they score in a hurry? And they can come back. Jack Scott into the game for the first time tonight for Princeton. The Tigers don't go particularly deep off the bench, but they have a few reserves in right now. Jackson Hickey is in, as is the freshman, Jacob Huggins. Yeah, and Jack Scott's kind of become their physical guard. He goes in and flies in for offensive rebounds, tries to make things happen physically. And Caden Pierce with the attack and the layup. Nice hero step in the lane there by Caden Pierce. First points of the night for the Ivy League Player of the Year. And it is a four point lead for UNLV. Down to eight. Johnson. Now with four, turnaround shot up in the air and no good out of the hands of Brooklyn Hicks, the freshman. So you see mo both teams going a little deeper to their bench, getting some young guys some experience here in the postseason. Pierce double team. Now Scott. Hickey stops the kick. Pierce three, no good. And the rebound tipped and grabbed by Justin Webster. Noah, you hit on something there, key. A lot of different names and faces out there for each team that we have not seen play together. Yeah, and I think coaches typically want to go deeper to their bench through the year, but then in certain situations, they, they get tight, and then their lineup shrinks. Huggins looking to distribute. The freshman Hickey. Pump fake, tried the layup, missed it, and then tipped it back in. Yeah, what a play on time, on target with the left hand and giving this home crowd a little something to cheer about here. You know, talking to Coach Henderson, he was so excited that Princeton not only was in the NIT, but got the host. And a turnover by UNLV. Two-point lead held by UNLV in the first round of the NIT. More from Jadwin in a moment. The Ivy League Coach of the Year, Mitch Henderson, another great job by him. He loses Tosan Awoma and Ryan Langborg from last year's Sweet 16 team along with Keyshawn Kelman, so three of his five starters, and he gets them back to postseason play. Yeah, back to back to back, Ivy League championships, the NIT run, the Sweet 16 run, now back in the NIT. He's just done such a phenomenal job, and 
year after year, he's got player of the year types. He's got first teamers. He's got the player of the year again this year. And not only finding and go, get, going and getting the recruits, but the development is sensational. And then just the incredibly high bar. I mean, they were undefeated for so long this season. Their first loss was at St. Joe's. And, you know, you see that the building has filled up this year. Three sellouts, four that was kind of on the verge. And the Princeton faithful are loving what they're seeing from Mitch Henderson. How about that move by Jack oh. Scott? Oh. And then a no call on the blast through by Whaley against Zach Martini to give oh. LV the lead back. Touchdown. I mean, we're running. <laughs> Pull back up the middle. I mean, if, if that's legal, come on, man. I would have scored 40 a game. You could do that. Just go through, guys. I mean, you got to call something there. And it's got to be a charge. Peters. Now to Scott again. Hickey working against Keelan Boone. And Boone alters the shot right as the shot clock was expiring. And Jackson Hickey trying to turn that drive into a post move, but... Needed one more dribble. And fumbling the ball away, Shane Noel. I see Princeton's got to play through Xavier Lee with this lineup on the court. Lee, scoop layup off the window and in. Yeah, just gorgeous. That's what he does so well. Creates something when there's nothing there and the great body control on the layup. Thomas off of one leg, missed the shot. Peters with a loose change. High game at 20. First round of the NIT. Martini from deep, knocks it down. Yeah, Rob Whaley Jr. thought he was there with the hand up. He got to be a lot closer with Zach Martini, who is just a driller. He's one of Princeton's top three point shooters. Don't be fooled by the size. He can hit shots from deep. He's given Princeton a three point lead. Boone, turnaround J, trickles off the rim, no good. Slap back outside, track down. Thomas tries a three. That's good. Thomas. Yeah, good pass to find DJ Thomas on the wing, but Prince has got to have somebody a little bit closer to him. Thomas's dad, Dedon Thomas Sr., an all time great at UNLV, oh. as Martini drills another three pointer, and the Tigers back on top. Hey, he's caught fire here, and it's so hard to guard Zach Martini when you pick and pop with him because the big man has to show on the ball handler. That, that's an incredibly hard play to block to, uh, to guard. Hicks has his shot blocked yet again as Lee able to knock it down. So I'll go right back towards number 54. Scott working against Whaley just to get rid of it. Down to five to shoot. Peters contested three, no good. Long rebound grab by the running Rebels. And a stop here that will lead us to a break, Noah. Princeton, one of the best offensive teams in the country. And a big reason is Xavier Lee's creativity. Hezzy up and under, scoop it in. And then Zach Martini, one of the best pick and pop men in the country, cash. Princeton up three. Princeton women's basketball in the NCAA tournament. They left earlier today to make the trip to Iowa City, Iowa. They will take on West Virginia Saturday at 5.30 Eastern on ESPN2. And looming, if they win that game, potentially a meeting against top-seeded Iowa in Iowa. The NCAA Women's Championship Tournament first and second round action taking place Friday through Monday. And then the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight rolling along March 29th through April 1st. And of course, things culminate with the National Championship game on April 7th. Yeah, so the Princeton women won. They sent the Jet NCAA Tournament. You get the charter out to Iowa. What an opportunity. They're going to have their hands full against J.J. Quinterly, the Defensive Player of the Year in the Big 12. She averages 19 points a game. Caitlin Chen, 15 a game. Madison St. Rose, 14. And then Ellie Mitchell, the league's leading rebounder. So I think Princeton's going to get that done. Boone 
trying to answer Caden Pierce. Kisses it off the window for a pair. Oh man, I mean, the, the experience, one of the best things of, of all these postseason tournaments is you're going to play teams you would never play, and you're going to go places you would never go. No offense to Iowa, but <laughs> your boy, I didn't go to Idaho, Idaho, which is a different state, I'm aware, until ESPN sent me there. I, I, I've been two places that weren't for basketball in my entire life. So those ladies are going to have an incredible experience. Zach Martini, who has 12 points so far, missing that three. Thomas trying to get going offensively, misses the bucket, but he'll go to the line for a pair of free throws. I mean, we, we were talking to UNLV, some of the people around the program, and, and we asked his, the head coach and said, hey, have you been to New Jersey? And he's like, hey, I flew out of Newark once. So, so they feel like they're on Mars as well. And that's what's cool about this is they, they would probably never play an Ivy League team unless it was in the postseason or come here to Jadwin, and, and it's just a, a great experience. And that's kind of been reflective of the first half, I think, that we've seen here so far as Thomas misses the first free throw. You, you get the feeling both teams trying to feel things out, line up wise and stylistically against the other. Yeah, without a doubt, and, and UNLV's been so banged up, they're trying to feel out their own lineup just because they've, they've had so many people missing. We know that you know, Jalen Hill towards ACL. Luis Rodriguez not with the team because of a family issue. So, you know, this is next man up mentality and two excellent programs who had really great years playing here at Jadwin. They're missing Caleb Boone as well, one of their outstanding forwards. He's still dealing with an ankle injury. Pierce gets the drop from Peters. Down to two. Pierce rolling to the rim and puts it home. Oh, yeah, that was like Bernard King. Quick spin. He shot it on the way up, and he got it on the glass in a hurry. Princeton up by five. Cottrell down low, missed the shot. Three Tigers there to grab the loose ball. It was a great box out inside by Zach Martini. Quick pass. Martini open from deep. Missed it. And Boone with one hand snatches it away. Thomas, a crossover. Boone, Euro to the lane. Beautifully done by Keelan Boone. Yeah, DJ Thomas with that great cross, thought he was being held, and then an excellent Euro step for the finish. Three-point lead for Princeton. Alaco tries to spin and puts it in. Yeah, easy money, great baseline drop by Matt Alaco inside on Justin Webster. Webster finds Noel. He tries a three and hits. Shane Noel for three. Shane Noel started for the first time of the year against San Diego State. And that was a heartbreaking game. They lost that one in overtime. And Alaco cutting to the rim. And he gets an easy two to give the Tigers a four-point advantage. Yeah, I like this matchup here, Dalen Davis on DJ Thomas. Cottrell can't hit on the three. Peters grabbing the loose ball. Approaching three and a half left to go. Half one, first round of the NIT. Winner gets Boston College on Saturday or Sunday. Pierce underneath the rim, a reverse layup is home. They gave Caden Pierce so much space, and he took advantage. What a spin move on the baseline. Even better finish with the left hand. Shot clock to 10. Cottrell looking. Noel, right there to Cottrell with the hammer. Isaiah Cottrell. Timeout called UNLV. by UNLV as they cut the timeout. deficit to four points. Fans, you can now access the official NIT digital game program on your mobile device. And Caden Pierce getting himself going with the spin move on the baseline. And then how about Isaiah Cottrell up top with the throwdown? We got a good one here in the NIT.
Well, Princeton fans know all about Pete Carrill and his career achievements. There's another historic coach to represent UNLV, and that is the great Jerry Tarkanian, who won 509 games, 19 seasons at UNLV. Noah, these two actually faced each other a couple of times, yeah. opposed each other in a couple of games. Yeah, and in opposing styles at the time when you know, UNLV was turn you over, score, 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 and, and the Pete Carrillo-led Tigers did not do too well in those head-to-heads, but everybody remembers that 1990 game when UNLV blew out the Duke Blue Devils 103 to 73, the only team to ever score 100 in a championship game. And, you know, Tarkanian became synonymous with that style. The running Rebels up and down, the gear was, you know, you could, you could be in New York, New Jersey, Florida, you're gonna wear a UNLV jersey. It just became cool to be a UNLV fan. Tark to Shark, the following season they played Princeton and it was an easy win for UNLV to the tune of 69 to 35. That team, of course, Stacy Ogbin, Anderson Hunt, Greg Anthony, Larry Johnson, loads of talent. Yeah, just about, uh, you know, three guys that were going on to have great NBA careers and a couple of you know, guys who played in the NBA. Great fight by Caden Pierce, who stuck with it, and the Princeton lead expands to six. Yeah, he's so tough, always sticks with it. He's got an excellent burst off the ground. Boone, looking for Whaley, and that's going to be a foul against Vernon Collins. Yeah, I thought Vernon Collins got him clean. Really doesn't play a lot. He's got a lot of potential, great length, great athleticism. I thought he got there and knocked it off his leg. And Noah, it is interesting. We've seen a lot of this Princeton team. We're seeing some lineups on the floor that we haven't seen much of throughout the course of this season. Yeah, so clearly, you know, Coach Henderson wants to give some guys some opportunities, get this postseason feel, looking to develop for next season. Whaley just blasting through Vernon Collins, the score. Yeah, really, really physical. He's got the right hand down. He's, he's dislodging people. 140 left to go. Ooh, Dalen Davis, what a move, but he can't finish it off. Whaley with a rebound. A little Steve Smith fake spin. He went off against Brown in the second half of that first round Ivy League tournament game. And a steal off of Whaley ahead for Pierce. Pierce against Boone. Oh, Boone with a tremendous block. Lee comes up with the steal. What a play by Keelan Boone. Yeah, I was about to say, Keelan Boone, watch out for your head because that's a matchup we don't see Caden Pierce lose very often at the rim. Scott. Trying to shake free. Nice look down low to Collins. Collins tried to save it and then threw it away. Right here, Caden Pierce on the break. Keelan Boone. And I think he got him clean up top. And Caden Pierce does not agree. Maybe he got a ton of arm with that ball. But we have seen some vicious dunks by Caden Pierce this year. And you just don't see anybody being able to catch him and, and elevate the way he does. He did not agree with that. He thought he was fouled by Boone. A lot of physical play both ways. And the layup by Justin Webster. So Webster able to get to the rim. He makes it a 38 to 36 game back and forth first half. Lee driving. That ball tipped out of bounds. It will stay with Princeton. Xavier Lee was ill in the run-up to the Ivy League tournament. He was in bed for basically 48 hours leading up to the game. And as a player, you're always going to want to push through. But you know, he really was depleted physically. Didn't look like himself. And it's just a streak of bad luck that it happened at that time for Princeton. And a turnover by the Tigers. And now UNLV with 13.6 seconds left to go. They have a chance to tie this game or take a lead with a three. Yeah, DJ Thomas going to be the trigger man here. If you know you want to believe players, you got to be ready to shoot it. Fifth turnover for the Tigers, second in the last minute for them. 
Boone. High arcing three at the buzzer is no good. And that closes out the first half of action. Princeton with a two-point lead, Noah. Yeah, and Princeton got some good contributions when they went to their bench and they made the adjustments to slow down UNLV going to the 1-3-1. I think that was really good to them. The Tigers out in front 38 to 36 as we go to the half. Stay tuned. Coming up, we'll have a look at Princeton NIT history, including their special 75 team and much, much more here from Jadwin Gymnasium headed your way. Tigers up over UNLV by two. At the half, first round of the NIT, 38-36 lead for the Princeton Tigers over UNLV. Derek Jones and Noah Savage with you this evening from Jadwin. And 1975 was a special year for the Princeton Tigers. The NIT, a little bit different back then, and it was something that the Tigers excelled at for sure. Yeah, and that, that team was ranked up in the top 10 late in the season. It was led by Mickey Stoyer and Armand Hill, who, by the way, played in the NBA. and. I talked to Mickey Stoyer about that run a new, numerous times, and the funny thing was, they didn't really think they were going to keep winning. So they had to keep calling and canceling their spring break plans on the way to winning that championship. They beat Holy Cross handily, South Carolina Gamecocks in a rematch. They had played them earlier in the season. The Oregon game was the closest one. They won that one by one point, and then they beat the Providence Friars by 11 to capture that very prestigious trophy, Tim Van Blumenstein and Brian O'Neill in that picture. And man, how about some of those haircuts, Derek? I mean, <laughs> you know, you, you could guess the year. As you see, Pete Carrill, Gary Walters there, longtime athletic director in the, in the photo, but what an accomplishment. No doubt about it. Princeton being able to win that NIT in 1975, a historic moment for Princeton basketball, Pete Carrill. Of course, Luke Harnaseka in that photo as well. A lot of history with this program for Princeton, and it spans the NCAA and the NIT. Yeah, without a doubt. And, and all those banners were hung by Mitch Henderson. Pete Carrill was, was anti-banner for some reason. And he said, I don't want the court named after me. I don't want the banners up. Coach Henderson, you got to give him a lot of credit. He said, no, no, no. We're hanging up the banners. We're naming the court after Coach Carrill. And as a player here in the offseason, Coach Carrill was around a lot get to learn from him he'd work you out and you see the massive amount of accomplishments for this program 30 Ivy League championships and the 1975 NIT the legacy of Pete Carrill living on right here at Jadwin gymnasium as the Tigers find themselves back in postseason play when we return first half highlights and stats as we break down the first half of UNLV Princeton in a moment. You're watching the first round of the NIT. Princeton leading UNLV 38 to 36. Derek Jones and Noah Savage with you from Jadwin Gymnasium tonight. A building there that Noah Savage knows quite well. That particular area as the Tigers. <laughs> Was that an academic building? Yeah, sure. Uh, first time I've seen it. it, yeah. it, it <laughs> if it wasn't Jadwin, not familiar, but we got a lot of great teams. And some of these games are going on right now, Derek. I'm looking at that Seton Hall St. Joe's game, and whoever comes out of that can go all the way to Indianapolis. I love that St. Joe's team. Eric Reynolds, one of the best shooters in the country, but they're down right now late over on ESPN2. Of course, feel like Princeton can pull this one out, can go beat Boston College. They might host that game, too. And then a lot of excellent teams. I mean, Cornell had Ohio State last night. I mean, they were up. Isaiah Gray got a late technical foul. They lost to Ohio State. But, man, if Wake Forest comes out of there, you have four high major teams in that bracket. Wake Forest, it seems like the last couple years, have been right there to make the NCAA tournament. And it's just been a misstep that has landed them in the NIT the last couple of occasions as Minnesota getting the win over Butler on the road last night and then games taking place right now. Bradley against Loyola Chicago. Cincinnati playing host to San Francisco. Villanova and VCU 
the winner of that game takes on South Florida, who has been very tough this year. Yeah, how about two losses by South Florida since January 7th? They've been great. Amir Abdul Rahim has got that team playing at an incredibly high level. And man, it's going to be tough. Iowa and Utah in the other second round meeting in that bracket. When we come back, highlights and stats plus second half action from Jadwin. The Princeton Tigers leading UNLV 38 to 36 at Jadwin Gymnasium. First round of the NIT second half action on the way in a moment. Derek Jones and Noah Savage with you tonight from Jadwin and a lot of action in the first half. Keelan Boone, nine points and seven rebounds for UNLV, Noah. Yeah, 6'9", and a really excellent defender. We've seen a, a great block, and then he got the offense going, knocking down a three. Excellent drive and body control for one of the twins, Caleb Boone, who's out injured. And then Caden Pierce, great in the paint, little hesitation move, and he was so good in the post. And you know, you watch him, he's got all the moves, the spin move to the baseline, up and under, and arguably a lot of these could be in once. He plays through so much contact that sometimes he doesn't get those calls where he's getting shoved, but his activity and his motor is elite. That's why he was Ivy League Player of the Year. Boone with the nine points and seven rebounds. Zach Martini, 12 points. Caden Pierce with 10. The Tigers early on shot a lot of three-pointers to the extent that the points in the paint, which is 22-20 in favor of UNLV. It was 10-zip UNLV. The Tigers went to work down low as a result, and Caden Pierce's play, one of the big reasons why they were able to close the deficit on that number. Yeah, they definitely made a concerted effort to get him the ball in places where he could post up and drive. And, you know, the fact that Princeton can shoot it so well meant that they could space out around him and give him some room to operate. Boone dribbles the ball off his leg, and a turnover to start up matters in half number two. Winner of this game gets Boston College on Saturday or Sunday in the second round of the NIT. Pierce. Now Alaco, who was quiet offensively in that half. Boone with that long arm. Sticks a paw out there and comes up with a steal. The Euro and the layup. Man, he likes that move. Second time we've seen it. The, the ball goes up, the hair goes flying, and the ball goes in the hoop. I mean, he, he's all over the place with his body movement in terms of basically using a shot fake during his Euro. Into Pierce. Pierce lays it up and in. Caden Pierce, two more. And the Tigers get the lead back at 40 to 38. And a great pass by Xavier Lee. They have the side cleared out, no help for UNLV. Fifth meeting all time between these two teams. Three of the four previous meetings won by UNLV. Boone cut off by Lee. Rainmaker three rattles in. Keelan Boone. Yeah, incredible because that was good D by Xavier Lee and Keelan Boone was stopped and just rose up and shot it at 6'9". I mean, he has got some excellent skill to go along with his size and length. 14 points now. As Boone with five to start here in the second half. Good passing to Webster. He knocks down a three. Yeah, Keelan Boone could have forced it. Said he pump faked and got it around to Justin Webster. And the Tigers scuffling here to start out in half two, down suddenly by four points. Yeah, just been Keelan Boone making great plays on the offensive end, but Princeton so explosive on the offensive end. 12-2 run for the running Rebels. Thomas against Lee, that's a fun matchup. Lee falling to the floor, nearly threw it away. Martini, his layup is good. What a move by Zach Martini. A fantastic creativity by Zach Martini to get that thing up on the glass in between the help. Webster against Delaco. Webster creating some room. Missed the shot. Jack Scott with a rebound. 
Yeah, create, creating room with the off arm. I mean, <laughs> I can't believe the the football like offensive moves I'm seeing here. The Lee three lips off the rim. UNLV holding a two point lead. Thomas against Scott. To the post for Whaley. Noel hits the three. Another three pointer for UNLV. They only average six per game, shooting at a 33% clip, but they are stroking it here in the second half. Yeah, just a dump in, double team, turns his head and able to knock down a three. Pretty easy money. Pierce finds a seam, missed the shot, got it back, put it up, missed the shot, but he was fouled. Caden Pierce with a couple of free throws when we return, but the running Rebel. Good UNLV ball starting things off well here in the second half. Ball moving all the way around the horn, and Justin Webster able to knock it down. And then Zach Martini, how about this finish? Bodies everywhere, oh yeah, here at the NIT. Five point lead for UNLV. First round of the NIT. We get a look there at the Princeton Sweet 16 banner from last season and a big part of that, Tosan Awoma, who began his NBA journey this season. 11 points a career high against the Celtics on Monday night. And he read that, uh, led that magical run to Sweet 16 past Arizona and then a beat down in Missouri. Eventually lost to Creighton, but he's done great things. He's been on a couple 10 day contracts and I spoke to him and he was like, the best thing that he took from Princeton was he's able to learn stuff very fast in the NBA, learn up schemes in terms of the defense and the offense and talk about time flying. I can remember when he wasn't playing that much here at Princeton and Coach Henderson kind of pointing to him at practice and going, he's going to be really good. Now there's there's really good and then there's 6'9", the best passer in the league, can score with both hands and in today's NBA he can make a difference because he can play three positions, he can guard multiple positions. And then his passing ability. You know, when you're, when you're throwing it to an NBA guy, your assists go up even more. And a footnote to that story, he has his first start tonight yeah, against the Indiana Pacers. Big time stuff out of Tosan and Wilma. And Caden Pierce, another guy trying to take it to the next level. This year's Ivy League Player of the Year. So think about it, Ivy League Player of the Year at Princeton, 24 and 22. And a lot of people around the league thought maybe 23 as well should have been Tosan and Wilma. Webster, open look for three, and Martini ends up with a loose ball. Martini, who had seven threes and a win over Penn to close out the regular season. Playing well here tonight. But Derek, when you think about that class that had to sit out a year because of COVID, you know, which was an unimaginable nightmare, it kind of went from that to like unbelievable dream. Sweet 16, NBA, I mean, uh, unbelievable. Scott with one, missed the shot. The rebound taken away by Cottrell. What a ride it's been for this Princeton class. Headed up by Matt Alaco and Zach Martini this year. As a foul is called against the aforementioned Alaco, Dalen Davis and Vernon Collins to report back in. Yeah, Princeton needs to get some stops here in the second half. And then get back to getting a piece of the paint, whether it's Xavier Lee, Matalaco, and setting up their three-point shooters. UNLV up by four. They've won 10 of their last 13 games. Trying to build some momentum here. Whaley, reverse layup is no good, but he's able to get a foul against Vernon Collins. That'll send Whaley to the line for a couple of free throws. And if you think of bring it back to the Sweet 16 run, who knocked off Princeton? Creighton, a team that was awesome. Oh, Baylor Schneiderman was amazing that game. Called Brenner. This UNLV team beat Creighton earlier this season. In a, in a semi-home game is how it's uh, termed on <laughs> Ken Palm, but they've had some big wins. We talked about how excellent the Mountain West has been this season, but they are excellent. And you know, just a couple weeks ago, they beat San Diego State as well. One more from Whaley. 
Johnson back in as Webster will sit. No doubt that the Mountain West has been excellent this year. UNLV finished fourth in the Mountain West. They beat San Diego State earlier this season. So they've had some experience against NCAA tournament level teams in their own league. Yeah, and it was the really the bad losses that UNLV had when they were injured is what cost them because it, it's a tough pill to swallow when you finish fourth and the fifth, sixth, and seventh team get into the tournament and you don't. Now, New Mexico won the Mountain West tournament, so they were an auto bid, but that, that's going to be a tough one to swallow. A 32-point loss to Air Force did not help. Also, a loss to Southern to start the year did not help matters either as Whaley sticks at home. Yeah, Whaley continue to play incredibly physical down there in the post. Xavier Lee, who has been quiet offensively, throws that one, I think, off the back of Whaley. And it will head out of bounds. It'll stay with Princeton as Blake Peters heads in to spell Vernon Collins, who is getting some extended playing time here tonight. Yeah, this is the lineup we've become more accustomed to seeing out of Princeton, where Caden Pierce is the five man at times, Zach Martini's the five man, and they're going to just have to double team UNLV when they get back down to the other end of the floor. And a miscommunication between Davis and Lee leading to a turnover for Princeton. They've been exceptional at that during the course of the year, not turning it over. No, not at all. No, number one in the country in turnover percentage and fewest turnovers, but Dalen Davis came off and everybody left him. And you got to just look at the hoop and shoot that thing when everybody leaves you. But the UNLV team has been good at pressuring. They've been digging a little bit on drives and, and forcing some turnovers. Five-point advantage for the running Rebels. Boone on the attack. Stops, turns, and easy two for Keelan Boone. And a really tough move when you're going full steam ahead. You stop, put on the brakes, and able to turn over the other shoulder. Boone up to 16 points now off of 7 of 10 shooting from the field. Lee gets to the window. That one was altered. Isaiah Cottrell up top certainly dissuaded that shot by Xavier Lee. Boone, 15 to shoot. Cottrell's Cutre been begging for it for the entire possession against Blake Peters. They're not even looking at him. And Hicks turns it over. Oh man, his teammates are, are not trying to give him the ball down there in the post. Lee finds room from deep, misses the three. The Tigers have been on a little bit of a cold spell from behind the arc as of late in this contest. Lee just two points tonight. He's a team's leading scorer on the year, averaging over 17 per game as Webster right to the rim and in. Justin Webster. A nice drive, left-handed finish. And a timeout called by the Princeton Tigers who fall into their biggest hole of the night, down by nine, 55 to 46. Some trivia to ponder. Who was the first coach in NCAA history to win an NCAA tournament game at five different schools? Perhaps we'll find out when we come back. UNLV trying to hand Princeton its first home loss of the season. The trivia question we talked about heading into break, who was the first coach in NCAA history to win an NCAA tournament game at five different schools? Noah, do you have a potential guess at this question? Yes, Lon Kruger. Hmm, that is correct, sir. But a little birdie gave it away to me. I my, don't know. My, listen, my initial <laughs> guess 
was Patino. And look, we, we know that Kevin played for his dad. He transferred, he started his career at Arizona State, transferred to UNLV and played for him. And he was a hell of a player. He got invited to a couple NBA uh, preseason camps. He played in Europe, he played in Asia. But the other two, as you know, nobody knows better than you, Derek Jones, Rick Patino and Tubby Smith. And Lon Kruger took 21 different times he went to the NCAA tournament. What, what an incredible run. An absolutely spectacular coaching career. And the other two gentlemen, Tubby Smith and Rick Pitino, won national championships, both at Kentucky. And that's something that UNLV does not need, another injury. Keelan Boone getting looked at yeah, he's playing the sideline. He's playing so well. I mean, doing everything on the offensive end, shooting the three, block shots, steals. And we see Princeton back in that 1-3-1, trying to just slow down UNLV. The floater by Johnson is good. Jackie Johnson the third. Yeah, Jackie Johnson the third. Right in the seam of the 1-3-1 defense. Teardrop from heaven. And Princeton needs a little run here. Johnson only played one minute against San Diego State. So Kevin Kruger having to go to the bench again here tonight. Alaco. Trying to pivot and puts it in. And they call that move a Dominique. Pivot, pivot back the other way. Gorgeous delivery by Matalaco. Ball deflected and stolen. Princeton has numbers. Martini, the feed inside is stolen. Thomas, his floater is up. That is no good and into the hands of Caden Pierce. Yeah, Blake Peters was thinking about a pull-up three on that fast break and gave it back to Zach Martini, who turned it over. Martini started out strong with 12 points in the first half. He's been quiet since with a pair, and then knocks down the three right on cue. I heard you talking about him. Fifth three, easy money, looks so pure. Quick release by Zach Martini. Coach Henderson told us he gives his blood, sweat, and tears to the program. Known as the dad of the program, as a senior leader for this team. That ball deflected, stolen by Pierce. Pierce ahead, lays it in. There you got pushed in the back. And you love Caden Pierce at the top of that 1-3-1. One, one. If you're a Princeton fan, he can dig down and get those shoestring steals. I don't know how he plays with those flotation devices on his legs, but <laughs> he's Ivy League Player of the Year, so he knows what he's doing. Kevin Kruger was wondering the same thing. He said, where's the kick ball on Pierce? But instead, Pierce gets the layup and starts Look, things up, Noah. Well, Caden Pierce right there, got it with his hand. And right there, I thought he got pushed in the back. It should be an and one. Caden Pierce bringing Princeton back within four here at the NIT. It's bracket time, and it's time for the ESPN Tournament Challenge. Download the ESPN Tournament Challenge app to fill out your men's and women's brackets. It's a wonderful time of year, and the best time of year to be a college basketball fan as it's bracket season. Yeah, I like Nebraska to knock off Houston. Kise Tamanaga, big time upset. Look for Drake and another co-league uh, participant with UNLV. I love Nevada. 10 seed, probably under -seeded. They're fantastic. Look for them to make a big time run. But I really should be asking my mom and my wife who always <laughs> dominate me on their brackets. The three is in Justin from Webster. Justin Webster. So the Dallas, Texas native extends the lead out to seven out of the timeout. Jackson Hickey in for Princeton. Hickey has it here. Goes by Boone, who's back into the game. Nice. No look feed to Martini. Has the three go halfway down and then come out. Now that playmaking by Jackson Hickey, the look off to the wing and delivered it on the, into the corner on the money. Down low, off the window and in for Jr. Rob Whaley Jr. His father was a 51st pick with the Utah Jazz. Started his career at Southern Idaho. And he has looked like a beast down there on the block. Lee still trying to get going here tonight.
falls down, and he is slow to get up, has to be helped to his feet. Gonna be felt, kind of felt on the floor hard. First personal, team second. Returning and that is not good, Lee Olympic. Returning for Brooklyn Hicks. He's gonna get a little break here. He's just in the corner. But he led the league in scoring for most of the season. He and Keno, Keno Lilly Jr. or Brown had a, had a nice back and forth. And you know, tonight just just two points and, and only six against Brown. Shot at two of eight against Brown as Alaco has a three. Rattle out. The Tigers have struggled from the field. UNLV not so much. 10 of 13 from the field in the second half. A 77% clip and a foul on the other end against the Tigers. Yeah, DJ Thomas just attacking on the break, putting more pressure on the defense. He turned down offers from Florida, Gonzaga, and Houston to stay at home at UNLV where his father played. And been kind of game controlling tonight. Been been playing more of the traditional point guard in terms of just managing the game. Hasn't been that loud. Whaley attacks the rim and hammers it home. Yeah, that's loud. Big time slam up top by Rob Whaley Jr. Having a huge game. The Tigers looking for their first win in the NIT under Mitch Henderson. Trips in 2016 and 2022. This one, they're an 11 point hole. Pierce. The kick to Lee. Lee with seven to shoot, backpedaling. Now to Scott. Scott with four. Gonna have to do something. Launches and comes up empty. The rebound taken by Noel. Pretty good defensive stand there by UNLV. Approaching eight minutes left to go. Whaley up to 14 points now, six of six from the field. Hicks shows the ball, stops, turns, and scores. And a timeout potentially here called by Mitch Henderson. And he wants to talk things over with his team that is now down by 13 points. 80% shooting in this second half for UNLV has given them a 13-point lead. UNLV up 13 in the first round of the NIT. These teams haven't met much over the years, but they're not strangers to each other in the postseason. Back in the 1998 NCAA tournament, the Tigers took on UNLV, and it was led by that guy, Mitch Henderson, for Princeton, 69-57 win for the Tigers, and in that game, Coach Henderson went all 40 minutes and poured in 19. Yeah, 19 points, six assists, three steals, three rebounds. His backcourt mate, Cornell head coach Brian Earl, also played 40, had 21 and five. And talking to Coach Henderson, he said he remembers a lot about that game. You know, up in Hartford, John Thompson III was having his first baby around the time. And he said it just vivid memories. Their team was ranked seventh in the country and felt they got underseated. And winning that game, he felt kind of like, showed the country how good they were. Their one loss at the time, they were 27 and one. Their one loss was to UNC, Vince Carter, Antoine Jameson era. That was a excellent Tar Heel team. Nine to shoot, down low, Whaley again. Rob Whaley Jr. 16 points, seven of seven shooting from the field, 13 point lead for the running Rebels. And how about the pass over the top? Found him on the baseline. Whaley closing in on a career high. Lee grazes the rim. He's still off. Thomas, who's been quiet in his own regard. Only five points tonight. Back to Whaley. Hicks, down low to Boom. Approaching 10 to shoot, Boone against a smaller lead. Boone leans in, can't score, tipped and grabbed by Jack Scott. Yeah, pretty good D by Xavier Lee inside, but seems like UNLV is just moving the ball until they find a size matchup and then going at it. 
Princeton's bench looking on, concerned. And Noah, they need something to go right to get that energy back into yeah. this building and the bench and the team. Yeah, they've been explosive. I mean, remember, just a couple weeks ago, they went down to Penn and dropped 105 on the Quakers. They, they are an excellent three-point shooting team. And when it, when it doesn't go in, a couple of possessions in a row, you can feel the anxiousness around the building, but they're going to stick with it, and they have the ability to come back in a hurry. So this game is far from over. The Tigers were down 22 against Brown in the second half and got it to within a one possession game before Brown pulled away and won by nine. Eight to shoot. They send the double into Thomas. Wide open, misses the shot, a rebound for Pierce. Pierce cut off by Whaley. Davis baseline, Jay, that's an empty trip. Davis tips it away from Whaley and tracks down the loose ball. And he grabs at his hamstring. He's got a little tape on it, but what a play by Dale and Davis to stick with it and knock that thing loose. Shot clock has been reset to 26 the seconds. Shot clock reset to 26 seconds. They had to make an adjustment there. And Noah, that's a good point. Davis grabbing at the back of his leg there as Lee explodes to the rim and missed the layup. He just hasn't had that explosiveness here tonight. Yeah, about the easiest shot he got all night. And he's frustrated with himself. He's not showing how great of a season he's had. He's been really spectacular in his sophomore campaign. Under five minutes left to go. Boone against Peters. Fadeaway jumper. That's money. Keelan Boone. Yeah, he's just not bothered. At 6'9", pivots three times, shoots a fadeaway, and he's looked incredibly comfortable tonight. Pierce, open look at a three, knocks that down. Caden Pierce. So Caden Pierce three. knocking down the triple. And for Pierce, he increases the scoring for the Tigers. It's a 12-point lead for UNLV. Pierce able to knock down that three up to 20 points now on the night. UNLV has gone to work here in this second half. And Noah, the efficiency has been at a high rate for the running Rebels. Yeah, Keelan Boone, he got stopped, and he still was able to shoot that thing. And then Justin Webster got involved. And it's just been kind of simple basketball, swinging the basketball around. Excellent backdoor cut right there by Rob Whaley Jr., who's been spectacular here at Chadwin. And you know, you're seeing a team that finished fourth in the Mountain West. And, you know, we, we heard a lot about Utah State, Colorado State, Boise State, all in the tournament. But, you know, this team finished fourth. A couple weeks ago, before they lost in overtime to San Diego State, they beat that team. And then they're a five seed. So you're seeing the level of talent they have. And Princeton is an incredibly talented team who's had a great season. And they are, they are beating them here by 12 in the NIT. And the thing about it is you don't get the sense, at least from the start of the game, it felt like there was an excitement there for Princeton. Yeah. There wasn't a hangover necessarily from the Brown game, but as this game has worn on, the talent level, and again, if you're just joining us, this is not a full complement of UNLV players. They're missing Luis Rodriguez, a double-digit scorer on the season. He's back in California, tending to some family issues. They're without Caleb Boone, who averages over 11 points per game. So they're missing some weapons, yeah. but they're still shooting it very well here tonight. Yeah, they're playing with a lot of confidence, a lot of poise, and I think Keelan Boone kind of set the table coming out, hitting a bunch of shots, and then not playing selfishly, getting his teammates involved. And the Tigers make another push here in the first round of the NIT against UNLV, down by 12. Princeton has not lost here at Jadwin Gymnasium this season. 12-0. But that streak in danger tonight. Inside, stolen by Jack Scott. Now when they were down against Brown, they put the press on as well. So let's see if Princeton decides to press if they score here. 
Lee spins to the rim, puts it in. That's the Damian Lee, Lee the Tigers fans know. Yeah, creativity, really high degree of difficulty on that layup, spinning to his left. Lee with four points now, and a turnover. That ball sailing over the head of Thomas, and that leads us to a timeout on the floor. The Tigers trying to keep their season alive. A 10-point lead for UNLV in the NIT. Daniel Chester French, a model student at Princeton University. Noah, you were a model student here, weren't you? Yeah, I mean, I, depending on who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's the model student carrying the books. You see Bill Bradley obviously crushing every record. He, he's tops in every record for men's basketball, but what a rich athletic tradition here at Princeton, the first ever football game was between Princeton and Rutgers, 1869, and they've been great here. 12 and 0 at home, and that's in jeopardy here, unless Javion Lee does more of that. Lee gets it down to eight. Is he starting to heat up? The Tigers need him to if they want to come away with a win and keep this undefeated streak at home intact. Now they've only got three team fouls, so they can afford to be very aggressive. Ball fake by, by Johnson. He missed the bucket. Whaley right there with the follow and one. Yeah, Princeton got the miss from UNLV. But Rob Whaley was in the great spot. Right there, when you get that, that miss, you got to come up with that ball. And Rob Whaley sneaks in there and one. So strong. And here's a guy he might want to think about a little, little football run after this is done. <laughs> Yeah, he's got great, great lower body strength, excellent quickness, 18 points. Perfect from the field. New career high as well. 19 points for Whaley. Leaves three, no good. Tipped around, kept alive by Scott. Nice play by the sophomore. Pierce will try to light it up from three, and that is way off. Last touch by UNLV. And a number of offensive rebounds, keeping it alive for Princeton, but it's just been a little off shooting the basketball here. Into Alaco, tipped, double teamed, five to shoot. Peters launches and hits. Blake Peters turning nothing into something. A lot of time left. Pressure picked up in the backcourt. And oh. a travel called against Thomas. And that's the 15th turnover of the night. And DJ Thomas thought he was pushed. But you just don't want to inbound it in that tiny coffin corner when you're UNLV. Princeton got great stuff from this press against Brown a few days ago. Pierce lost the grip a little bit. Wider lane here at the NIT. And a lane that Lee uses to access. Down to six. Prince is going to drop back into that 1-3-1. One, one. Johnson. Oh, and a foul called. The fans thought a steal had been forced. Instead, it's a second foul against Xavier Lee in team foul number five. Applied to the Tigers. And I think that Coach Henderson told Princeton they're letting people play physical, only three team fouls, take some risks, and they've been really going for it. Let's see right here if he gets some arm. Oh, yeah, all over the arm. Easy call. Six point game. Tigers have no timeouts left. A lob inside, the kick. Boone steps into a three, and it rattles out. Whaley had a shot at it. Scott pulls it away. A great physical rebound by Jack Scott. Pierce, now Alaco. Lee gets a step, and he is fouled. Xavier Lee will go to the free throw line with 1.41 left to go and try to get this down to potentially a four-point game. And Princeton 
at first. Thought they might have a little break. They didn't need to rush it. Got the ball back to Caden Pierce a number of times, and then Xavier and Lee did the rest. Great creativity when he came off that handoff. Lee missed on his six of his first seven shots, and he misses that free throw. He had hit on his last three shots from the field, but missing a free throw there as UNLV will call a timeout with 141 left to go. It's interesting, Lee has, as the season has hit the latter stages, struggled a little bit from the free throw line. Yeah, and it's, it's nothing other than you, know, you got to calm down, some nerves. He's a great shooter. And, and it, across college basketball, you see some of that where the guy shoots 38% from three and isn't like an 80% shooter. But his, his jump that he's taken this season has been remarkable, and it's been partially more opportunities with Ryan Langborg leaving, but also his improvement as a player and, and learning how to become a star rather than being a role player. And you got to give Matt Alaco a lot of credit who really unselfishly sacrificed some of his offensive game. But he's really been picking it up here in the second half. The scoop, spectacular finish. Look at this move, spinning, left-handed off the glass. And then a series of moves getting to that left-handed scoop shot. And how about that for passing Caden Pierce's Avian Lee? But that's what he gives you is give him the ball, he can make something happen. He, he, you don't need to call a play for him. He can just make it happen off the bounce. And the boot. That was just the second trip to the line tonight for the Tigers. Webster, 90 seconds left to go, five point game. Boone, instead of the three, keep that ball moving. Five to shoot. Inside, Whaley is right there and he gets fouled by Jack Scott. They've had no answer for Rob Whaley Jr. tonight. Now it's a great pass by DJ Thomas. Pump fake outside. Almost forced it. Just a left-handed dump pass and a great lunge move by Rob Whaley Jr. where you catch it facing one baseline and you pivot all the way around to the other baseline. How about that? Whaley, human tonight for once. A yeah, rare, rare miss. Right out of your prints, you got to fly it up and get into something fast. Just 113 left to go. Whaley gets one out of two. The lead for UNLV back to six with 111 to go. Alaco steps into a three, missed it. And the rebound taken by UNLV with 104 left to go. And Noel will head to the free throw line after the foul by Caden Pierce. It'll be a one and one situation here, at least rest of the way for the running Rebels. And I can't believe UNLV let Matt Alaco, who's a 44% three-point shooter, just step into a wide open three. They really got away with a big mistake there. Scott will head out, and this has to be a frustrating moment for Alaco because for Matt Alaco, if the Tigers do not win this game, this will be the final time that he, along with Zach Martini, will play in front of these fans at Jadwin Gymnasium. Noel with the first. One more for Noel as Alaco, who has been really, when you look at the most valuable players. Certainly, Xavier Lee, Caden Pierce come to mind, but Alaco is the leader of this team. His team right now is in trouble, down eight. Princeton stand up because one minute Peters remains. open from deep, knocks down the three. Peters. Blake Peters hits the three. It's a five point game, 76 71. Pressure picked up into Boone. Boone. Ahead, nearly stolen, deflected ahead to Noel. The feed to Whaley, and Whaley is fouled and back to the line. Rob Whaley will go. Yeah, I thought Blake Peters had a really good chance of getting that steal. 
And it was an excellent tip ahead by Shane Noel. Right here off the trap, I thought, I thought Blake Peters was going to get that. And it was a really heads up slap ahead. I think it was actually Justin Webster who did it, but that was a heads up play. Whaley misses the first. So the free throw line, his kryptonite tonight. One out of two. In the lead with 51 seconds left. Martini tried to find room to shoot, could not. Lee in. That one too hard off the window. Pierce right there with a follow. It's a four point game, 77 73. Boom. Into Noel. Noel is fouled. Blake Peters right there on the spot. As Princeton will send UNLV back to the line with 39 seconds left. Mitch Henderson hoping his Tigers have some magic left in the final 39 seconds. Meanwhile, Kevin Kruger of UNLV hoping that his team can seal up a date with Boston College on Saturday or Sunday as Noel is good on the first. Shane Noel, perfect on the season from the free throw line. That makes him five for five, not a big sample size. Noel, who has not been at the line much at all this season, only well, had four free throw attempts all season. He's had that here tonight. Pierce. Down to 30 seconds left. Alaco lost the ball, and a foul is called. It'll be against Noel of UNLV with a push. Pierce, hand off, Lee in the lane. And Lee is fouled with 22 seconds left. Another great drive by Xavier Lee. Able to get in the paint, but just 22 seconds left. So Prince is going to have to try to get a steal. And that foul against Shane Noel, he has fouled out. So, 10 points for Noel, and UNLV looking to win here. UNLV, UNLV's women's basketball team also looking to take care of business in the postseason in the NCAA tournament as a 10 seed against Creighton Saturday, 7 Eastern on ESPN out in Los Angeles. And yeah, the men got him earlier, so UNLV faithful, hoping they can knock off Creighton. I think Creighton on the men's side is a great chance this year. And they're lined up with that Tennessee lower bracket, but they got a, they got an excellent chance at a Final Four and breaking through. Lee's first is good. Again, Princeton, no timeouts left. 22 seconds remaining. Lee looked like he missed that one on purpose. And the rebound off to UNLV. And a foul. As Justin Webster will go to the free throw line. They try to design play to knock it off the glass and hit the rim and go get it. But UNLV did a good job to come up with that rebound. Justin Webster to the line for UNLV. So Webster at the stripe. And a season. For Princeton that had so much promise heading into last weekend is 19 seconds away from ending. So looks like UNLV will have Boston College coming up. Quentin Post, Claudel Harris, Devin McLaughlin. He just knocked off Providence, which was one of those teams that got hot. 
late in the season. Couple from Webster extending the lead out to seven as UNLV will call a timeout and fans begin to sense that the end is near here for the Tigers with their team down 81-74 and Noah, you hit on it. UNLV, if they hold on, they will play Boston College. How do you see that matchup playing out? Yeah, well, number one, it's going to be probably at UNLV, right? So it's going to be another one of those kind of cross-country flights. And I've been impressed with UNLV. I mean, they're, they're banged up. They're missing some players. Keelan Boone has been excellent tonight. DJ Thomas lived up to expectation. I thought Rob Whaley Jr. was the star for UNLV and for Coach Kevin Kruger right there, who who has done an excellent job battling through all those injuries. Peters launches a three, that's good. Blake Peters cuts it to a four point game. The Tigers will not go away. Five seconds. Cottrell with the basketball and Cottrell is fouled. I mean, that was an eternity. Felt like an interminable count. There have been, there have been some there have been some interesting non five counts that I've seen over the last yeah. week. Yeah. Maybe maybe where you were. <laughs> Cottrell at the stripe. Seventy percent shooter on the year from the line misses the first. So they're leaving the door just a little open for the Tigers. Yep. By, by international law, I'm supposed to say you don't need a three here, but I think you need a three here. Come up, shoot a three. Foul again. Lee quickly with 10 seconds left. Fires up a three. That's no good. Grab and taken by Brooklyn Hicks with 5.7 seconds left to go. And that's probably gonna do it here. Matalaco, of course the, these two seniors are gonna enter the transfer portal. They're gonna get another year to play because of the COVID year and Matalaco is certainly gonna be a, a highly sought after player. I mean, he's fantastic with his mental approach, his leadership, a great shooter, 50-40-90 season for Princeton. And then Zach Martini, a, a stretch four slash five. That, that's valuable in any program. So those guys are going to play a lot more basketball. And he's going to get some love here from Jad when he deserves it. And this is a nice touch by Mitch Henderson giving Matalaco and Zach Martini a chance to be saluted by the home fans here at Jadwin for the final time wearing that Princeton uniform. Back to back to back Ivy League regular season champions. The Sweet 16 run in 2023. A number of all Ivy League selections for that man and Zach Martini there every step of the way is a huge contributor as well. Into Lee with three seconds left. Peters lines up a three. That's no good. And that does it. UNLV picks up their 20th win of the season. They win at Jadwin Gymnasium to advance to the second round of the NIT. They will take on Boston College on Saturday or Sunday. The UNLV just came in here, played with a lot of confidence. Keelan Boone was great. DJ Thomas ran the show, and then Rob Whaley inside was fantastic. Some tremendous performances by UNLV with four players in double figures, a shorthanded UNLV squad tonight that ended up grabbing the win and handing Princeton its first loss of the season here at Jadwin Gymnasium as the Tigers. Successful season has come to an end. They will finish the year 24 and four on the year. And now for the running Rebels, a trip back home and they will take on Boston College on Saturday or Sunday. Give us an idea of what you think there with those two matchups. Well, Rob Whaley Jr. is not going to be able to just be the biggest man on the floor because Quinton Post is a dynamic seven-footer. He's added the three-point shot. He hit 48 of them, shoots 43% from deep. And Boston College just knocked off Providence, and they beat Clemson March 13th a couple weeks ago. They are an excellent team. UNLV 
is on their way to the second round of the NIT. They hand the Tigers their first loss of the season here at Jadwin Gymnasium to end the Princeton season. It's been a fun time here at Jadwin as a part of the NIT for our entire crew. And Noah Savage, I'm Derek Jones saying so long from Jadwin Gymnasium and Princeton University. UNLV wins it 84 to 77 to head to round two to face Boston College. Have a good night, everybody.